Hey guys, it's me Badger here. Uh, I'm going to show you, uh, before we get on to uh, part two of the Kex Editor tutorial, uh, I'm going to sh show you how to extract uh, this game, this uh, game.kpf file into uh, your uh, root folder here. Uh, you don't have to do this right away, but in order to get into the teleport uh, section of the uh, Turok, you have to, uh, you need to have uh, the, the game files uh, extracted from this game.kpf file right here in your root folder. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. We're going to rename this into game.zip. Click yes, and it uh, turns into game.zip. Now you can use winzip, or you can use, I mean, I mean uh, you can use winrar, I'm sorry and you can use 7-zip. Either one is fine as long as you can extract uh, this into the root folder here. I've already got it extracted, but we're gonna go through the process just, you know, as an example. So we're gonna, I'm gonna right click and then say, it says extract a game. And I'm using this with Renroar right away. So uh, you just do that. And you extract, just wait a little bit, and we'll extract it all into this uh, little folder here. Good. And as you can see, this is a, like this is your main Torok files, essentially. What's in this game.zip? You can you can uh, ex you can export to uh, the workshop later on when you uh, publish your map. So as you can see, it's got textures. And you want to you know get familiar with the files. Go ahead and uh, you know pause this vid and look through, look over the files, and you can uh, get kind of familiar. You know what's there. You know maybe a lot to take in, but. Uh, as soon as you get more familiar, you will, uh, this won't be so intimidating or nothing, you know. It's actually, you'll, you'll see this as useful. Before you, uh, get, actually get back into, uh, the game, you actually get back into the, to, to the editor, or, or even to play the game, you have to rename this back to KPF. It's rarely important, always, you will not be able to load the game at all. Very easy to miss. Okay, so now that we renamed that, uh, we're going to uh, load the game. You know, play the editor mod loader. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load. Uh, the map we had before in the previous video, new map dot map. I'm going to open. And uh, so we got our map from before. So before we were talk you know, we loaded a game and uh, basically everything was dark though. There was no sun, no nothing. So we're gonna get into that today. Uh, first things first, go to sector edit mode. Uh, select all you you hold down control click right click and then it says select all sectors or solid sectors and verses or select matching sectors all these sectors right now that we have right now is pretty much the same so either one will do the same thing but late and later you you want to start uh, selecting matching sectors and really really rare selecting all sectors and verses because that can uh, really mess things up uh, so, getting the practice of doing this, selecting matching sectors, and you right click, and right down on the bottom here, it says properties. I want you to click that, and it shows all the sector properties. So, uh, 
what you want to do is uh, don't mess with flags yet. We're getting the flags later. These are just normal sectors. We don't have to mess with flags or anything yet. This is where you use for like, you know, special situations and stuff. You know, these are very useful, but we're not going to get into this yet. Why don't you go to settings and look uh, look what we got here. So, uh, yeah, normally uh, the sky height. So first we have our water height and the sky height. And this shows, you know, the different heights of water in the sky in the world. Uh, really, water height only matters if you are uh, messing with water sectors. If uh, you, you know, if you're using normal sectors besides, besides uh, water sectors, you don't really have to, uh, you know, be, be so concerned about this. You know, this, this is okay just to mess with. You can put a thousand or whatever doesn't really matter we'll leave it at zero for now but you know just keep in mind you know don't be so concerned about the sky height here you want to get this early on uh, normal sky height is uh, 500 so we're just gonna put 500 right now now that's like a default you know sky height we can use there auto map color ID so this is when you uh, open your uh, map inside the game. This is the color that uh, the map will show when you're in, inside the game. So when you open your map inside the game there. So uh, right now I would, you know, since this is a grass sector, we want it to look like it's, you know, it's a green outside. Since it's outside, we want to have it green. I guess you can do that. Either one you want to choose is fine. If you chose to uh, not use a grass sector for this tutorial, leave it at white. Don't matter. Choose any color you want. But generally, uh, in, inside uh, the the vanilla Torak game, you know they they use green to uh, designate grass, white for cities, blues for water, reds for lava, and so on. These are used for like sa some of these are used for saves and saves inside the default game any of those will do but you don't have to follow that format but you know just for to give quality for the map you know you want to generally follow the vanilla game so just we'll just leave it for green for this uh, example here uh, fog color this is uh, why this is the color simply the color of fog outside so like that's why you know it looks all black outside because we have the fog color here so we're just going to click on that and uh, it has a whole bunch of different values here. You have this whole wheel here that you can use. You can change it to whatever color you feel like you want to do. You know, you can choose that color, that's fine. But uh, I, th I think it would be really uh, useful to uh, show you the default uh, the default fog color for uh, for a tar for the the jungle, the the first level and the second level. I thought it'd be very useful to show you what that is. So, if you want to have that that color for now, you just go one four seven for hue, saturation sixty five, luminosity ninety four. Red, leave it at 70, 73. Green, leave it at 90. And blue, 127. And that's the that's the default jungle, you know, fog you use. So, uh, okay, press OK with that. Alright, and that's pretty much the default jungle fog. And water, I don't have water on me right now. But, uh, I think I'll leave it in the description of this video if you want to no, learn the water. I didn't get a chance to write write what water was right away, so uh, I'll just leave that for the vid. But for now, we're just gonna select some really random uh, color. We'll just put it at purple. Now I know it says water color, but uh, the fr but keep in mind that the water textures are always going to be blue for the default 
vanilla textures it's always going to be blue so this is just uh this is just a water it's really uh be more descriptive to call this water fog color instead of just water color so that's a more accurate uh statement what this really is uh fo fog uh z far now this is uh this is the extent of how where you can see through the through the fog so uh this is the distance you can see at a minimum of what the you know of what uh when you use the fog so uh let me put this in more I'm going to open paint.net just do a quick illustration here of what I'm talking about here do what I'm talking about uh okay so pretend this is uh this little black dot right here is you and this is this is the distance of where you can see the fog here you can't see any enemies outside uh, where it says fog C far you can't see any enemies outside of uh, this limit here this num number number limit here and uh, and so that's fog fog C far that's what it means so like it kind of you know if you move if you see enemies they'll get blurrier and blurrier until they disappear b between this numerical limit here uh, fog start this is when when uh, the fog you know it begins you know it begins to get foggy so if you had this like very close you had this uh, start start very close and uh, fog is far very far you'll have like a little little foggy map there throughout the whole map so uh, so so this is basically what it what it is this is the the fog start right here this is fog z far so if and if you saw an enemy just walking away it gets start to get foggier and foggier and foggier till uh you can see him more past this little limit here but that's what it always is that's what it always is so uh yeah that's that's what that's with the stuff how fog works in Chirac. So we're going to go back to the editor. And this is the default levels. For uh, simplicity sake, you can put it farther if you want to. You know, it don't matter. You know, besides enemies, this, this does affect enemy sight. But other than that, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can put this 2,000 or 3,000. You don't have to follow my guide here. You can do whatever you want with that. Sky speed. Sky speed. I'm gonna put at one because this is you know the this is the you know that's kind of like the default speed of the sky that you'd find that you'd expect in a normal level. If you put it any farther, like this would like 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 maybe like ten, it'd start to get like uh, how it looked like in the later levels with uh like level 7, if you've ever seen level 7 of this game, you know, you'd notice that the sky speed would, is very fast. That looks like you're moving through the sky or something like that. To give that illusion, you'd put it on like 10 or even higher. But for a normal speed, just leave it at 1. Blend length, we'll, we won't get to that right now. Uh, ARG 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is basically for, uh, controlling events and stuff. ARG 1 and 2, this is all teleporter stuff. This all has to do with teleporters. ARG 3, this has to do with, uh, checkpoints. Checkpoints, uh, use ARG 3. Uh, ARG 4 is for, uh, movers. And movers, we'll get down to it in a later uh, video. We're not going to do movers right now, but movers and events use this ARG4 here. 
five and six, this is a uh, lava damage. And this is the how often lava damage occurs. So that's our five five and six. We're not gonna we're not gonna get into this with this video here. But that's what these are. Uh, for impact ID. So like let's say you shoot a bullet or something on the ground. With uh, and this is what those control. With uh, default, you uh, you'd you'd see like a the ground uh, like uh, it like it shoot. Default means dirt, really, essentially. That shoots up from the ground when you shoot the ground with a gun or bow and arrow or whatever. That's uh, what uh, that means. But uh, I'll just leave four ID what it is because we got grass here. But the walls are going to be stone. They're going to be rock walls. So we're going to use stone instead. Just to add realism in this. Ambiance and music. Now, ambiance and music use like a... You'd have to me mess with this. But uh, this changes uh, how, you know, how the, how the sounds are in the game. Like you'd see like bird sounds and stuff background this is just background sound right here you know and it's co completely modifiable in the in the game so uh, but that's what this is so I'm just gonna change it to one just for the heck of it you know normally I just don't mess with it until I you know want to get really detailed with the level I just leave that alone uh, music music I don't you know, mu music is not really modifiable. You cannot upload uh, music into Workshop. Most monitors you will use ambiance, but music, for some reason, uh, the not up upload. You can't really upload into uh, the Workshop because the game folder, the music folder, is not inside the game. At the game folder that we mentioned in the start of this video. So, uh, no, we can't. We can go up to like, I think like 13 or 14 with the music, but it's all default music. If you want to choose one of those, it's fine. But as of the, as of, as of this vid, this is not modifiable, but, uh, but yeah, you can change the default music up from the vanilla Torak through this. So I'm just going to leave it at zeros, uh, the normal jungle music. So we're just going to leave it at that for now. Uh, draw order. We won't have to mess with. And then press OK. And since I'm in sector edit mode, the, the uh, map automatically uh, shows... Uh, if I press save here, and go inside the game. And I'll show you what it looks like since we edited all those uh, options with the sectors. Yeah, see, there's a sharp contrast to what we saw before now. It looks pretty good, huh? Except one thing, we don't really see the sky. We don't really see the sky, so, and we w we want to have sky, don't we? You know, for our video, so uh, we want to have sun too, because there's no sun. So uh, we're going to uh, go back to edit at the editor here, and we're gonna mess with that right now. So, right click in our properties. Now the first thing you want to do, go to flags here. Now we got uh, draw sky. This creates the sky. You know, it creates a little sky sky up there. And this draws the sun. Press OK. Save the map. And I want to show I'm going to show you the vast difference this creates here.
There's a sun up here. There's a sun up here, and uh, that's it. But there's no uh, clouds. That's a that's a problem, isn't it? It doesn't look like uh, doesn't look like the you'd expect from a vanilla game if there's no uh, clouds up there for you to view. So what we're going to do about that? So we're going to go to View, World Properties, and there's this little thing that says Sky Material here. And of course, you can mess with sun color or ambient color. You don't really have to mess with that. This is like kind of like the default right here. You don't have to mess with that right now, but you can if you want to customize, make it look unique. You know, make your uh, map look unique. Then yeah, you can mess with that if you want to. So, but but sky material, we have to uh, we have to pick from uh, our our materials. We get like three skies available to us throughout the whole game. Right now we're going to use the jungle sky, which is uh, skies. You're going to type skies slash sky materials or capital M materials slash sky underscore brown. Okay. So we press OK on that. Save the map. Always save the map before testing. Otherwise, uh, you you know you're not going to see the changes inside the game. Wow. See now it kind of looks like a uh, vanilla vanilla Torak game. There we go. Kind of looks like the vanilla Torque game, like the you'd expect from the N64. With that, uh, the the one that comes with the remaster actually doubled uh, the Fog Zifar and uh, you know the Fog Start and stuff. They actually doubled that. I think it's uh, either 15 or 2,000 with these options here. But for uh, simplicity's sake, we're just going to leave it at that. If you want to edit it, that's fine. But so we just uh, put it go like that. Uh, let's see. So now that we uh, mess with our sectors here, uh, we got a full uh, sector here with a. Uh, Maps coming along nice. Uh, we want to. It's kind of bothersome that uh, outside this box you can. S it's kind of like we're on a floating island. So in order to fix that, usually I want him to be down on the grass here because uh, I don't know. It just bothers me that he's floating up there. It's kind of like it, when you start the level, he's going to be floating up here. And he falls down, like like he's falling down from somewhere. No, I just want him standing, so I just uh, I just pressed N, the end key like uh, I've showed last video. Just snapped him down. Okay, but we wanted to uh, add some wall meshes here, so it doesn't look like we're on a floating island. We're gonna add some realism here. So uh, I'm gonna go to Canyon. Uh, well, we're gonna go to Canyon. Uh, wall, let's see. Wall, flat, corner, con, uh, concave. Okay. So I'm going to insert that mesh here. Press end to stamp down. And we're just going to kind of use this little gyro here. Just kind of place it right here since we use we, since we snapped the grid before beforehand uh, we're just gonna kind of go like this here shift G to snap the grid so you make sure it's all accurate take a take a look just make sure it's lining up and stuff 
You can go closer, you can go far. Just kind of make, make sure it lines up. But since we're using this uh, blue, blue, we, we've lined it up with the blue, blue grid as a guide. So it's safe to say this is uh, correct here. So we've got our begins of a wall. I want, uh, I want a, a wall that goes straight. Uh, I want to connect more wall to this uh, wall that we have right now. So I'm going to go models, canyon, wall, flat, straight. Insert mesh there. Now we got a connecting wall here. So for this, we just kind of kind of put it all together here. Shift G to snap it to grid, and we'll keep on doing this. Uh, and, I, and then, then at this point, since it's where you want it, we can easily copy it and paste. It. Continue doing that. And I want more wall over here. If I want more wall right here, I just copy, paste, kind of move it over here. Go to the transform tab. Uh, either 90 degrees or uh, minus 90 if it, if it doesn't like fit all the way. Like it, like if uh, if it was backwards, I'd try try going minus 90, like so. But it worked for 90 degrees. And then try to fit it just like before. Put it right there. Snap the grid. Wonderful. We're just doing a little wall for now. And if I wanted to uh, go even more, you know, if, if I had a bigger map, I'd uh, select multiples and uh, copy two at a time. Alright, so now that we got this, okay, so now that we got these here, remember, always remember that this is just the decoration and the sectors really determine where, you know, where everything is, where you're supposed to be. So if we did sectors like we did uh, yesterday, I'm going to uh, move these little, move these little sectors down, move these little sectors down here. easier to go behind these meshes here. You can't really see here. But I'm going to select these verticals here. Kind of move these out of the wall. Off the wall here because I don't want Torak peeking over the wall. <laughs> That's kind of weird if we did that. And it looks like I it's, you know, some of them are moving, some of them are not. And this is because, and this happens a lot, you've made like double verses while pu pressing the middle mouse button sometimes they'll make uh, double verses so if you want like uh, so if you want the sector properties press F1 sometimes it just uh, does that Let's see you have multiple verses here so I'm just going to delete those verses take it a stride just delete the verses that just popped out here And try again. So we're gonna select the verses that didn't move. Okay. There we go. Now uh, Torak won't be uh, looking over the wall into the void. And then uh, this would be a proper wall. So I'm just gonna kind of. You want to always add a little space between the between the, your sectors and the meshes that you have in your map. 
I'm just going to make this a little bit better to add more realism here. So it doesn't look like uh, there's an invisible barrier. It looks more believable. Okay. So what I'm going to do, well, like we said, we gotta we gotta make a wall here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into uh, press F1. I'm going to press the space button to go into array mode right here. And for walls, I like to do this. I like to put one, two, three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, really. So you go like one and two, one and two, one and two, one and two. And this is for like if you had Turok walking on top of these walls here. Uh, he won't. Uh, he won't be standing in the air or nothing, because uh, which I'll show later, actually. But uh, I'm going to continue down these walls. Place some vertices. Remember, this is a. You want to place the vertices like. You're not not modeling the walls or nothing, but you're placing uh barriers where Tor can walk, basically. So wherever your sectors are. This is where Turok's walking. So, we're going to press F2. And I'm going to click this verse we have up here and try to connect the wall here. See? Like so. And if it's sticking out like, like this right here, I'm going to kind of... I'm going to kind of move these forward so I'm going to move this to the left and this one to the right here and this one to the right here like so like I did so and with all these selected I think we can afford to raise these it's worth worth the note that uh, these type the these uh these sectors can be the most time consuming these cliff sectors here can be the most time consuming and you notice a cliff sector because it's orange. If I went to right click, when you have a when when you have a sector go up, go up like that, go under in a certain degree, it'll turn automatically turn into a cliff sector. So right click, go to properties, and you can see it says cliff right here. Cliffs checked. If I want truck to weirdly go walk up this wall here, I'd uncheck that cliff. I don't want it to start walking up the wall here, but we'll do that for fun, won't we? Yeah, I just I'm gonna in one of these cliffs here. I'm gonna have Turok walk up the wall, literally walk up the wall, and it's gonna be fun. All right. So we're gonna do this. Put more verses on the edges here, so. And I could. You're, you're probably asking, I could probably avoid putting these down by the corners here and just go all the way over here and just uh, have a sector go up there. Well, I'm going to show you what goes on if I did that. If I, if I just uh, avoided all these sec these uh, verticals right here, just sectored all the way over here. Now I got, it's kind of looks kind of sloppy. It's passable, but it's sloppy. And look, look. I risk uh, going over a vertical and having a, se a sector going over a sector, which is pretty bad. If your if your sector goes over a sector, it, you know it uh, doesn't enable a truck to walk over them. Over your sector is really good. And look, I'm trying to create more here, more. It gets better while I get close. See how it looks neater when I get close, but when I go far away. And this is just a bad practice to do. It's just a really bad practice to go sector over long distances like that. It's less kind time consuming, but uh, at the same time, it's kind of sloppy. Your, your sectors look really sloppy. If you're if you have a, if you want to do maps really quick, you know, just uh, 
make sec sector cliff and just uh, copy it and transfer it over, which we'll be doing later in the series. But for now, I want you to do that. So I'm just gonna, and you can see these are cliff sectors. Even though if this is flat, we cannot walk over cliff sectors. We can barely walk over cliff sectors. So we're gonna change this. We're gonna untake the cliff. And it goes back to a normal pink sector that Char can walk on. So. And it looks like it's really low. Like the sectors are over, low under the grass. I mean, that's fine. If you, if you want to keep it like that, that's that's fine. If you want to be neat, you can try raising them up. By selecting the verticals and raising the sector, sectors up. But you can leave it like that. That's fine. Don't have to mess with them. So, what do we got here? I'm just going to finish this up. And then we're going to uh, make more uh, cliff sectors after we uh, get the wall here. Get this little wall done here. Alright, so I got that done. Get more cliffs. Get more cliffs done. And as you can see, look how these are all spaced apart. This is what I'm talking about, long distance like that. If I was making a, you know, a neat map, I wouldn't do this. Do my sectors like that. I'd go one, two, three, or one, one, two, one, two. I wouldn't be doing like that, but this is just a tutorial. This is your first map. If you have a problem with it, you can always go back anytime and uh, redo the sectors. Alright, we haven't sectored this far, so we have no verticals over here. So we'll just stop right there. And then we'll do the same with this side here. I want. I did that on purpose. Now, uh, it says vertex cannot be on the edge. That means uh, you create your. It won't. The game will not let you uh, create a bad sector. Now we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But when it says vertex on the edge, that means you have to kind of. If you ever wanted to uh, do that. And from this position right here, this is kind of, kind of sloppy. If I did that anyway, but. If I ever wanted to do that, I'd have to move this up because it can't it can't be uh, slo it can't be sloped outwards. You can't create create a sector that's sloped outwards. See, even that's not going to help it. We're probably going to have to get this down if we ever wanted to create a sector here. And do it like that. See, now it let me create a sector because if I, let's push this back a little bit. You see this, how it turned red like that? This is what's known as a bad sector. You do not want to have these inside your map because, uh, you know, it, it, it just looks sloppy like that, but uh, also your map might not even start if you have a bad sector. And we want our map to start. <laughs> so uh, we're going to uh, push this back. And this is just sloppy sectoring anyway, so I'm going to delete that. If you want to make sloppy sectors, go ahead, but, uh, search up your call, but, uh, for me, I just don't like, it doesn't add to the realism of the game. And it's sloppy like that. So, as you can see, the cliff. These, need, these sectors need to be popped out because the sectors are going behind the mesh. And I don't want them going behind the mesh because then I can see behind the mesh. 
And as, as you can see, when I did that, I created a whole bun bunch of bad sectors. Create a whole bunch of bad sectors that not naughty, naughty sectors here. So we're we're gonna do a remedy that is they're gonna pop pop out uh, the sectors be below for where there's uh, red sectors here, which is pretty much everything here. <laughs> I'm gonna pop them right out here, and now we'll create an even slope. See now, now those uh those sectors didn't turn red, and these sectors are turning red here. So we're gonna de-red redify, make these bad sectors good here. Sectors are all good. It's only when you turn them bad that there's a problem. And then of course we can pop this out a little bit. These sectors are kind of out pointing outwards so it talks to me walking over a wall that kind of bothers me personally. You'll get the hang of uh, sectoring. See this is what, what I mean by less than opt optimal sectoring. You want when you make cliffs you want to go one, two, one, two, one, two. Like I said before this is not one, two. This is why I'm, I have to I have to screw up these sectors now because I didn't do that we'll just leave it like that okie dokie and then like I said we're gonna we're gonna make some a sector for fun here we're gonna not make this a cliff sector if you didn't believe in cliff sectors I'm gonna show you why you should believe in cliff sectors <laughs> all right so uh, I'm gonna save this map Go to new map, dot map, save, and press play. Let's see what we got here. Looks vastly different. Looks like a vastly different map. Remember that uh, auto ID that we had? This is stone, and the ground's gonna be dirt. See a difference? Okay. Now one of these sectors I made, you can walk up the wall. See, you can't go up the wall when you have a cliff sector. You can't go up any of these walls when you have a cliff sector here. So, we're gonna find a wall that we didn't make a cliff sector of. Ah, uh, ah, uh, this is it, yep. That's what happens when you don't have a cliff sector. It looks like you can literally walk up, up this like a leaper. And that looks weird. Don't do this. <laughs> but it is fun. It is fun to do. I admit, it is. But try not to do that. <laughs> okay. So, quit. And that's pretty much all I have to show you for now. Uh, we'll get into more uh, detailed sectoring uh, later later on in the series. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, peace. Have a good day.